Hello and very warm welcome. You're joining us on Startup Central here on ET Now. I'm Vikram Oza. This is the only one hour show on Indian television that focuses on startups, on technology, on innovation, disruption. In fact, anything that has to do with the new economy, you'll find it on this show. So if you have a unique idea, if you want to share feedback, you can pitch to us as well on suc at etnow.tv. That's our email ID. Imagine a six-year-old writing a code for a program or even powering a robot. Well, EdTech startup Wiz Club is aiming to do just that. They want to change how school kids learn skills. They have an artificial intelligence uh, provided tech platform. It's got an interactive hardware component for school kids. Rahul Dayama has caught up with Amit Bansal, who is the founder and CEO of this startup, just to understand how it works. Take a look. We fundamentally believe that education is the way to uplift a society, whether it is moving from one strata to another strata or making this world a better place. Education is the only way you can actually make a difference. And that's what uh, you know, keeps me motivated to keep solving the unsolved problem in that education space. All right. You know, it's interesting. Uh, but the biggest problem is to get the young kids in school right. excited about learning, right. make learning fun for them. And you're telling us that kids as young as six can actually start coding, use robotics, right. all in the process of learning. How does that really happen? Right. So if you look at it today, I think the, uh, the world has moved beyond the centralized production factory based system. Today, technology has enabled people to start producing technology product solutions uh, through garages. You know, one member team, two member teams uh, can do wonders over there. And that's something which I think in education space, nobody has used the power of technology to make meaningful learning and problem solving and making sure that these kids grow up to be creators of tech products rather than just being passive consumers of technology. Got it. Uh, could we have a quick demo because I, so, I like how you know right. there's a tab that has uh, associated with every kid but you do have modules out there uh, right. in terms of content that has been built in. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very interactive way uh, you sort of see uh, what you're up to. Could you show us Right. Model? So if you look at mm. it you know it's a very simple interface. It's a drag and drop interface. Uh, kids don't have to know the mechanics of uh, coding hmm. they can use the blocks pretty much like you have lego board hmm. lego blocks which you can use for building mechanical stuff you have programming blocks which you can drag and drop to make stuff on that so you know this is just one robo uh, you know one kid has written this small program a six year seven year old kid uh, doing something like this uh, displays it has mm. lights uh, and all of this is essentially a way for someone to uh, really develop their problem solving reasoning logical thinking skills mm. applied in the area of technology so technology mm. is the via media technology is not the end goal over here you have a life which you know you will you can keep learning technology on that but what we want the kids to grow up with the confidence of saying that I don't want to be a passive consumer of technology, mm. I want to be a creator of technology. All right. You know, you're targeting young school kids to the age of, uh, you know, about 12, right. really. But uh, this is also heavily in terms of, you know, you need to have these gadgets around. It's uh, You have an approach of centers, right. you would have a... Uh, how would you really scale something like this, you know? Or, or right. is the idea to really solve for the smaller set of people but have an impact? Uh, so whatever we do, efficacy is that at the heart of it. So we won't do anything which does not really solve that problem. The problem that we are trying to solve is saying, how do you get kids to develop smart thinking so that they can learn effectively and they can solve problems. So we are at the, whatever we are doing, right? The heart of that is saying we will make kids smarter thinkers and smarter problem solvers. So that's one. Uh, how do we scale, right? So scaling and I have scaled, you know, the earlier ventures as well. So I can share with you what typically I see as challenges in scaling. One is uh, when you're doing a boutique setup uh, and when you want to move from 100 people to a million people, right? Uh, how do you make sure that the millionth guy also gets the same learning efficacy as the first guy is getting in the system, right? And that's where the tech platform uh, comes into play, where today technology is so powerful mm. that we can personalize that experience 
to a point where I know sitting over here what any kid around the country is doing, uh, how he or she is learning and make sure that they get the same consistent experience over there. Got it. But you know there's so many players, EdTech uh, is flooded right. in terms of startups trying to solve. Right. I know they target different segments, a lot of them have gone on to raise a lot of equity capital. But everyone now wants to be in the space across, uh, you know, from K-12, that was really right. the big target. To uh, How will you really stand out? So if you look at it, uh, the large part of the K-12 players are still focusing on curriculum. They are still solving the maths and science problem, saying that uh, the way maths and science is taught in schools is not as effective. I will give you a more engaging way of learning maths and science. So that's still solving one very specific problem of curriculum. What we are solving is a very different problem saying, if you have got good aptitude, you can learn and solve problems in any domain. And this problem you can only solve in the first 12, 13 years of your life. After that, you know, your core aptitude is pretty much custom mm -hmm. stone. Mm -hmm. And that's something which I think is a very, very interesting problem to solve. Why? Because these kids, when they are going to join the workforce, they are not going to be doing repetitive stuff. Mm -hmm. They're going to be solving problems which are new. They're going to be working. 70% of the kids are going to be working on jobs which don't exist today. Right? Yeah, a lot of new <laughs> jobs will come up eventually as well. But how, how have kids been react to, uh, reacting to something like this? Uh, you right. know, how are parents reacting to it? And is it natural for you to go out there and start targeting schools now? You know, you have right. a system in place that sure. you can... So, uh, kids just love it. You know, let me start by saying that. So, two things I think which is very unique to our program. One is the entire program is designed to make the child think and the kids of today's generation don't get enough opportunities to think and apply themselves. Right? School is still by and large memory and recall based, you know, road memorization, uh, teacher comes, broadcast, they consume and in the test they just repeat whatever was asked them or whatever was taught to them, right? So it's school is still largely a memory and recall based system. Second, you know, they are consuming content passively, you know, YouTube. Uh, cartoon channels, playing mindless games, right? All of that is passive consumption of mm -hmm. technology. Where do they get opportunity to really develop and express their brilliance, mm -hmm. right? And this is the platform which allows them to do that. So though, you know, you see the gadgets over there, there mm -hmm. is an entire pedagogical design behind each and every activity that a kid does which makes sure that the kid develops the problem solving and logical thinking skills Got while they're doing this. You know, you uh, mentioned about gaming and uh, we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, a lot of companies use gaming as a tool to really encourage, you know, the interactiveness and also have kids a lot more involved. Um, that's again a big area, right? right. In terms of how gaming can, of, co of course, solve for the problem. So, uh, I'm a big fan mm. of games, right? And I believe that games, if they're designed the right way, uh, can get you to develop certain aspects of uh, thinking, right? The challenge on games is that you are on a virtual environment and for you to take that learning and apply in a real world, that connection more often than not fails, right? And that's where you need a physical environment through which you are learning and expressing yourself and also developing those skills and able to express those skills in terms of solutions. So, you know, when kids over here, they actually write a program, right? They actually solve a challenging task and see the output in real time, whether this is happening or not happening. If it is not happening, why it is not happening? So they go real time, do that tweak, then again test, then again do stuff over there. If you, do you remember any program that, uh, uh, you know, uh, student really using your platform has really worked on and sort of has left you impressed in... Uh, surprise lots of them <laughs> you know? so you know the way we want them to uh, you know, so there one one thing which we make sure is uh, we give child enough room to express themselves so there's no right one right way of doing things yeah, yeah. right so we give them a problem statement we give them an environment to say that you can test out your solutions and you can figure out whether the solution is working for you or it is not working for you if it is not working for you what is it that you need to do is the journey that the kid goes through right where they keep optimizing and figuring out where did I go wrong and then correct their course through till they find the right solution and because you know they end up creating a product every month right like would by the end of month one they will create a smart light uh, through which they can display and program 64 million colors uh, another month they are going to do a smart uh, 
you know, remote control through mm-hmm. which they can control their TV, right. these devices, all of that. Uh, they see that whatever they're learning, they see the practical application of that and grow with the confidence of saying that I will not just be a passive consumer. Mm. I can build and code technology products. Got it. But where do you really see Wiz Club in the year or two to come in terms of expanding uh, um, and reaching as many cities as you would like to? So first, uh, obviously, you know the the uh, uh, I, I I believe that if you're doing something good, uh, you should take it to the masses, right? It should not only be a product for the elite uh, and there should be different models that you take. How will you ensure the product is not only for the elite? So one is, you know, mm. it's it's priced uh, or rather, you know, we have we have not taken a um, product which is out off the shelf from the US market uh, because mm. that jacks up the price. So, you yeah. know, let's say today you have a Lego Mindstorm. Mm. Mm. Uh, the kit itself is like 50,000 bucks, mm. right? Mm. The moment you start coding on a 50,000 kit, you are just addressing the top 0.01% of the guys, right? In our case, the kit can get started for as low as 1,000 rupees a month. Wow. Right? Uh, which still, I'm saying we are still working hard on that, saying can that 1,000 become 500, mm. right? Mm. Uh, so that it reaches the masses. Mm. Mm. Uh, we don't want anyone to be left behind. So we are committed to a social cause of saying that 25% of our students at any point of time will be from underprivileged segments. You know, we are committed mm-hmm. to that cause.